And uh, now we have Brian McGee, uh, of, uh, formerly of Simple Minds and Propaganda and uh, ESM, uh, joining us. And very, very lucky. Brian, welcome to Chatterbox. How are you, mate? Hello, Brian. Um, I'm very good, Nick. How are you? We're surviving it all as well. Yes. That's good. That's good. I think last time we spoke, we were hoping that lockdown was coming to an end. This time, we oh, well. <laughs> yeah, oh, isn't it, mate? Brian, um, what an amazing career you've had. Um, I'm, I'm cheating a bit and I've got the, uh, obviously, the Wikipedia page up, so do cor- <laughs> correct me anywhere. Um, but Simple Minds is sort of where I would first know you from. And I see Glasgow in 1977. It goes back that far. So yeah. it says yeah, rock band here. Well, the thing was, Nick, that Simple Minds were originally... Um, a punk band uh-huh. uh, we, we started in school we weren't called anything we had a kind of arty farty name uh-huh. uh, it was Jim Jim and Charlie myself Tony Donald mm-hmm. uh, and a guy called Joe Donnelly started in school together Joe Donnelly went on to be in the, the, one of the main guys in the silencers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, basically we, ca- we continued from school and then if it hadn't been for punk uh, the whole punk scene. We would never have done a concert because we had the the bravery, and um, we went to a pub in Glasgow mm-hmm. near where we all lived, and just said we're a band, and we actually weren't a band at all. <laughs> and we just we, we just said book us in, and we invited all our friends. <laughs> and this was this was under the name of Johnny and the Self Abusers, Nick. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't well, know that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if you delve into the past, that's originally what Simple Minds yeah. kind of started from. And, mm-hmm. and the best laugh was that the band Johnny and the Self Abusers mm-hmm. actually disbanded uh, when the, on the day, same day of release of the mm-hmm. very... We, we signed a one-off record deal with Chiswick Records down in London. OK, OK. And the day the, the, day the record was released, the band kind of fizzled out. It was mm. it was a kind of joke, but, mm. but a great excuse to get up on stage and cut your teeth, as they say. So that sure. was a kind of initiation for, for us. Yeah. And that, that was the, that's where the 77 comes from. Sure, OK. Um, now, the, 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 the music scene in, in Glasgow. Now, let's... Can I take it actually back to when you were a nipper and uh, was... Apart from obviously your siblings, were you from a musical family at all? Um, well, I, think, I think in the old days, in my days, or when we were all young, your mother, your father, your aunts, oh, your uncles yeah. all met up at Christmas or parties of any excuse. Sure. And everybody in the all, all my family, this is before I ever was, had the bravery to sing. Mm-hmm. My, my father would get up and sing in front of my cousins and my aunts and my uncles. My other uncles and aunts would all take turns. We'd sit around us the whole room and we'd say, right, Oni, who's my dad's name, gives us all. My dad's a very confident singer. Okay. Um, and I think that's kind of, like, he wasn't the only one. I had an uncle, Tom, Tommy, mm-hmm. Tommy Hatton, who's a brilliant singer. He sang kind of Jim, Jim Reeves and Nat King Cole and okay. all these kind of guys. So you kind of everybody in Glasgow, everybody in that era was not just Glaswegians. Mm-hmm. You were all brought up to that kind of actually fear for the life mm-hmm. of someone shouting out, "Right, Brian, come up and give us a song." I'd run out of the room. Uh. I, was, I was so nervous. Uh. But like I said, that that's my, my all my family sang. Even my sister, I have one mm-hmm. sister, mm-hmm. Uh, and I have uh, one, two, three, three brothers, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got another I've got a brother Paul who lives in London and he's, he goes under the name Magusa uh-huh. and he's, he's he's a professional singer with a band okay. his whole Facebook page as well same as own um, uh, my, my, my brother John my oldest brother John is actually the best singer of everyone <laughs> he mm-hmm. doesn't have a record deal. he never done anything in the music business Okay, and of course Owen's uh, been a, a big supporter of mine, and I'm a big supporter of his, yeah. you know, because I knew him before I knew you. And uh, Owen, if, if people aren't aware, we, we're most everyone that listens to this show will will we hope, but there's always a new listener somewhere on one of the new networks. And uh, yeah. Owen Paul is, of course, your younger brother. Yeah, well, Owen, obviously, um, we've spoke about this before. Mm. 
own would watch me and Simple Minds kind of growing slowly but surely. And we never went to London, Nick. We, uh-huh. we always stayed in Glasgow and we made our roots in Scotland. Sure, yeah. um, and Owen left out the house at about, I think it was about 16, <laughs> and went to London and uh, tried to, you know, make it big or whatever. And uh-huh. he, he based himself in London, whereas I stayed in Glasgow. Mm-hmm. But Owen had watched what I was doing and obviously felt that was his path as well. Mm-hmm. And um, amazingly, uh, he had success in the 80s and it was like one of those things where you just... The chances of two brothers being in the charts and being successful during the eighties and oh. from the same family was quite unique. Was there a point uh, of, that you're aware of when you were in the charts of Simple Minds the same time Owen was in the charts? Top like top seventy five even. Yeah, you... there, there probably was. But <laughs> Owen was down. At, Owen was down. At, Owen was managed by Peter Powell, Nick. Uh, I'll see. Okay. Told you that. Um, and so he was very kind of his own thing. I mean, we mm-hmm. never really crossed border. I was I was away from home nine months to ten months of a year. Okay. And hardly hardly saw my family at all. Uh-huh. And I'd be home for maybe a week to get my clothes washed, <laughs> and then off I, off again. <laughs> so we never really crossed paths until maybe the last ten twenty years. Sure, sure, okay. Now, one thing I do hear uh, about, and uh, y- you seem a little bit earlier than, than a lot of the, the groups that I'm, uh, you know, I've spoken to from Glasgow, um, but a lot of them cut their teeth, as it were, on a, a club called the Mars Bar Club. W- w- was that, were, you, were you before that time, or, or did you ever do anything at the Mars Bar Club? Because to me, it's like the uh, Glasgow version of the Cavern. Yeah, the Mars Bar was just unbelievably so small. <laughs> a small pub that allowed, again, it was a kind of punky thing, uh-huh. just allowed bands to play at it, and it was tiny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, can't, I, can't, I think there was a charge at the door. But um, we, we played, uh, some of mine eventually became, uh, or had a res- residency on a Sunday evening in the Mars Bar, uh-huh. and it was kind of the, the place to be, and it was quite a cool place. Glasgow's booming with bands and mm-hmm. the scene was you know absolutely electric at that period of time and the, like I say the Mars Bar had other bands that were kind of grew on to be bigger bands as well um, but, but that's where Simple Minds got their kind of the, their name out and it became bigger from that that, that pub and the pub sure. was tiny it was absolutely tiny so I think Sue's got a question about uh, about about your name so no, it was about the Mars Bar Club and then well, Mars... but ask both of them <laughs> Brian, Brian, I've got two questions for you. Why was it called the Mars Bar? Well, actually, Sue, so they, um, they got away with it, to be honest, because I don't even know why they called it the Mars I think it just sounded quite cool and trendy. But the thing was that um, Roundtree Macintosh, or whoever owned Mars at the time, uh, th- threatened to sue them, so it was quite a short-lived. I think it lasted about a year before the word was out that they uh-huh. were actually calling themselves the Mars Bar, so uh-huh. they had to eventually change it because of copyright and all that. Thank so you so much know. for <laughs> thank you so much for answering yeah. that question. Um, my second question is, how did you come up with the name Simple Minds? Hmm. Um, well, that comes from a David Bowie song, Gene Genie. Okay, and yeah. It was, it was Jim. It's uh, something like uh, the lyric is something like uh, he's, he's or she is so simple minded, blah blah blah, and it's in the Gene Genie track and Jim for some reason caught onto that name and it just stuck. Um, a lot of people thought it was a, um, a kind of derogatory name towards yourself but um, <laughs> you know it's just the name that stuck and eventually through time uh, everyone got used to it. I loved it. I thought it was a really cool. It's no it is. It's very nice. Great. Well, you know, it is brilliant, and you know how they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Maybe, maybe simple minds is in the uh, eyes and ears of the beholder for that. It, it, it only insults you if you're paranoid. Yeah, perhaps yeah, it's a great name. And 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 this, look, I've just actually had this uh, tot up of how many hit singles you've had in the UK, and I'm making it thirty six. Wow! I never, I never count that. <laughs> well, you've, I, lost, also, you've also, lost count. <laughs> so well, well, not even that. Um, uh, when I was when, when I was in propaganda, propaganda mm. had number ones all over Europe except yeah. for the UK. And um, that's the one one of these things that you know you think you know, my main thing was simple minds. I was going to Spain mm. uh, with propaganda, and we'd be number one in the charts, and we'd fly in at the airport, we'd go through security. Um, straight in, we'd be on the six o'clock news and we'd do a concert that night and it was just unbelievable yet hardly anyone knew about the band in the UK. Sure, and propaganda also I believe, 
Uh, this is like the, the little uh, brain cell here because you know, I'm pretty, pretty good on my music. But uh, am I right in thinking they originated? And I'm not cheating, but am I right in thinking they originated from Germany? And they're like a, a German techno type backing music they had. Is that? Am I thinking the right yeah. people? Yeah. Yeah, basically, basically there were three or four of them originally. There was a kind of fusion of uh, Germans. That they all came from the Dusseldorf area. Uh -huh. Um, and basically what happened was it was a project band initially and Trevor Horn and oh, wonderful. From, from from ZTT managed mm -hmm. to hear demos, signed them up, brought them over from Germany sure. and based them in London and they recorded an absolute smash of a first album. Uh -huh. It's called A Secret A Secret Wish. If you ever have time, Nick, mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. it out. It's okay. absolutely unbe unbelievable. Trevor Horn, Stephen Lipson, um, all the guys from um, the ZTT, Sam West Studios, really absolute Frankie Goes to Hollywood producers. Mm -hmm. These guys were all bang on at the time, and the Propaganda's first album was unbelievable. Absolutely a classic, absolute mm -hmm. classic. And, of course, to have Trevor Horn involved anyway, I mean, just just the fact that he's <laughs> anywhere near that project. I mean, he, what a talented guy. What a talented guy, you know, really. Yeah, t t Trevor, I've met, I met Trevor a few times, and uh, he's actually quite a character. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have massive respect for him as a producer and a songwriter. And everybody always talks about Buggles and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Tre Trevor did the Lexicon of Love. He did... Uh, Grace Jones, uh, mm -hmm. Slave to the Rhythm, he did absolutely, Frankie Goes to Hollywood stuff's mm -hmm. unbelievable, and he still, he did Seal, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the track, but he, he did a ton of artists over that mm -hmm. period, and he's still going strong, and he's an absolute genius, <laughs> he's a yeah. very, very modest man, but he mm -hmm. is, uh, he's up there, yeah, he's, absolutely. Up there Phil, he's up there with Phil Spector in my opinion. Yeah, no, absolutely, and and the same with Buggles. That 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 one week at number one, people think it's one hit wonder, but Buggles wasn't. Uh, I, I I particularly love how he turned out Elstree. I think that was the third single. That was amazing with the black yeah. and white film going with. Uh, no, amazing, yeah. talented guy, video wise as well as producing, writing, and all all the rest of it. But well, well, let, well, well, mm. Trevor, Trevor, sorry, Nick. Trevor recruited a great team behind him as well, mm. and Dudley, and people who did all the string, all the string arrangements. An absolute brilliant team mm. of you know doing the whole thing, all the radio stuff and all the mm. press stuff. All an absolute well polished and talented bunch of people doing all that as well. So that was a, that was a mark of success. Sure. Now you mentioned propaganda. Now what's what sort of era are we looking at that? Uh, you were involved with propaganda. What, what sort of years? Uh, was that? I, I, jo I joined propaganda nineteen eighty five mm -hmm. to nineteen ninety one, but six seven years. Sure, sure. I said, no, no. Uh, well, the thing with propaganda was when I joined propaganda, they didn't have a band as such, so uh -huh. um, they recruited Derek Forbes, ex bass player from Simple Minds, mm. and Derek became a member of propaganda just before I did, uh -huh. and they were looking for a drummer to go on tour. And Derek recommended me, and that was one of the best things he ever did. And I didn't have to do an audition. I went straight down to London, started rehearsals, uh -huh. and within within five, six weeks, we were on a world tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my, my whole life went 100, 100 miles an hour after that. Now, did you find... Let's, I'm just going to step back, and then I'm going to go back forward to propaganda. But did you find that when you were... Because I, I, I'm looking at this number of hits, you, you were a supergroup. Uh, as in, uh, a, 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 as in uh, simple minds looking at these hits. Uh -huh. Did you did was there a point when all of a sudden you uh, couldn't go down the road to get a paper or see a football match or go to the pub? But or, or were you just so busy that you never even noticed? Well, um, well, well I'm the drummer, so the drummer uh -huh. doesn't get as noticed as the lead singer. Thank, thank God. <laughs> okay. um, because, because I had a you know, an element of uh, privacy in my life. Sure, okay. Uh, one, of the, one of the kind of most obvious places where I got recognised was in my hometown in Glasgow and uh -huh. various parts of Scotland. And I, I, to be honest with you, like, when I came home from touring, I very rarely went out the door because all I did was wanted to grow a beard and, and relax in the house uh -huh. with the family. And, and if any time I did go out, you would get hassled and people would be, you know, you would never get peace and quiet. That, sure. when it was peaked at the peak mm. but like I say most people never really knew who I was um, but I get surprised every now and again when someone will come up to me and go you're the guy for some more minds you're the guy for the still to this day you're the guy for propaganda 
Yeah. I'm like, wow, well, how do you even know that? Uh, I, the, the, that's, that's got a lot to do with social media nowadays. Well. Yeah, I, I was going to say, really, to jump in, as I said, I'll jump back to, uh, forward back to, forward to propaganda. Uh, so you say you, you know, like, like went and did something in Spain where it'd be a gig. Now, obviously, you were popular in Spain, popular in Germany. And uh, uh, was there a point when you had. I oh, think oh, Top Pop was actually Dutch. When you went on to their version of Top of the Pops or whatever the programme might be, when you got so recognised that you actually got recognised in a different country, like at the airport, you, you, you're getting back on the plane to come back to, to uh, Scotland. Uh, yeah. did, did that ever happen, like in other countries? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Like I say, propaganda, more so propaganda, because <laughs> um, just because of the... the, the the way that the record companies sold propaganda was all to do with the individuals in the band as well as the group. And obviously they were massive in Germany, but propaganda mm. had number ones in Spain, Italy, France, Belgium, Holland, mm. Israel, Japan, mm. Australia, and everywhere you went. That's what I'm saying. No matter what country, I couldn't believe. I actually couldn't believe how big they were. Mm. Mm. Even, even although I, I, no one in the UK, they, I think they had two top tens in the UK. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and then it was kind of, they were a kind of credible bands band. Mm. But like, like I say, we'd go to Germany and be flying into the six, it would be on the six o'clock news. Oh. And, or, or, wow. or Italy, people would recognise you in Italy. You'd be sitting in a restaurant. And people would walk up to you and start asking for your autographs or <laughs> get a picture taken and stuff, and it would be like, you know, it was just uh, just crazy, absolutely crazy. What about, the, you mentioned Israel, but what about sort of like uh, over a bit more, we say more like the Far East perhaps? Uh, yeah. Oh, how about, shall we say, Japan? Because if they take hold of somebody, they're yeah. incredibly over the top. So, so you yeah. hit Japan as well, did you there? Yeah, propaganda. I didn't lose uh, put Japan with simple minds. I went to uh, Japan for a two week uh-huh. tour of Japan with propaganda. Uh-huh. We all we all arrived at the airport. They picked us up on separate limos. Oh, okay. <laughs> we went to we went to the hotel. We had they had kimonos as guests in the room, flowers, fruit, mm-hmm. treat, treated you like gods. Uh, and one of my best memories of Japan that was. We played the Budokan Theatre, which is a well-known venue in uh, Tokyo, uh-huh. uh, and it was something like 5,000 seater. Um, and uh, I'll, as a drummer, I would always go in first with the curtain mm-hmm. closed, so I would get up, prepare, get myself ready to go, and the, the intro would start. And I actually remember walking on stage, and I could hear my feet <laughs> on the on the floor of the venue of the stage and everyone was not even speaking to each other they're so disciplined and behaved oh, okay. I, actually, I actually thought the venue was empty uh, and i'm looking <laughs> around to the crew and the band thinking is there anyone out there <sighs> and then the music started the curtain opened up and there was about five thousand people standing mm-hmm. going nuts um but but when literally five seconds before we went on stage no one said a word it was as if there was no one in the room wow Wow, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a it's a different culture thing. Yeah. It was something that I wasn't used to. So, similar in Germany, actually, when we first started doing German gigs, is the Germans don't really go nuts until the very last track, and you think they're not going down well until the very last. <laughs> it's, it's quite bizarre. You're thinking this is doing this is not going well at all, and then at the very end they go bizarre. They actually go bonkers. Well, I, I, uh, how on, how unnerving is the Germans? I don't mean to be disrespectful. They have this way of looking so serious. So I wouldn't oh, want to be. <laughs> imagine me doing a festival yeah. there for two hours and they're standing there looking yeah. at it like that. But, oh, yeah. oh well, wow. In the, the very early games, you actually thought you were going to do like a lead. <laughs> I'm glad you told me. Games, we were just standing in the dressing room saying to the promoter. Why didn't they react before? And they said, no, this is Jan- that's the way Germans do it. They will study you, they watch what you're doing, mm-hmm. and they really take it. But the thing was, <sighs> Germany was one of the first countries that ever took to simple things. Uh-huh. Germany, uh-huh. Germany and Bel- Belgium were the two main European countries that, that really we broke mm-hmm. uh, at the very start. That gave us the strength to go back to the UK and allow the record companies to keep investing in the band because... The UK was a lot slower, and it's all it's all about markets at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, um, I see the first uh, sit, um, propaganda first time round were basically eighty two to nineteen. I think you said you 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 joined in about eighty five time. 
Um, yeah. When we sort of uh, come back and have Propaganda March Mark Two, which I see is about 2005 onwards, yeah. were you involved or did you not want to be involved or, or what was the situation? Well, um, well, what happened was the two main girls, there's mm-hmm. two girls in the band, Susanna Freitag and uh-huh. uh, Claudia Brooken, yeah. they, they, they decided to continue with the band, but the rest of the guys, the main songwriter, Michael Merchants, uh-huh. And Ralph Dorper, who did the lyrics, and Derek Forbes and myself. Uh, mm. Well, I wasn't asked, and I oh, was okay. actually I sent a message saying I'm gutted. <laughs> yeah. But but um, they just they get two, two girls got involved with Steve Lipson from ZTT, who's uh-huh. who co-produced the the first album of Propagandas, mm-hmm. and they they which just decided to re-promote the older material and go okay. out touring and gigging and whatever. And at that time, I was with uh, Owen with XSM and stuff, sure. so um, it wasn't really. I was just saying it as a joke. I wasn't saying it seriously, but. Um, if propaganda was actually the original band that I was in, it, to go back and do it again, it, I would be absolutely gutted if I wasn't asked. <laughs> yeah, well, it's always, I guess, in life, nice to be given the opportunity to say no, perhaps. But you've yeah. now moved on to the next bit. Very exciting bit, this. Uh, uh, X Simple Minds, uh, ESM, I'm doing that right, I think. Now, XSM, XSM. XSM, we do. Okay, so XSM. Um, yeah. What year... Did did you sort of uh, form that roughly? Mm, what era? Mm, I, I, I give in. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I think it was about twenty fourteen, roughly. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm trying to find out myself now. <laughs> well, I, I, I might be wrong, but um, basically the idea was Derek Forbes, the original bass player from Simple Minds. Uh-huh. Um, during the right, from the the year after I, I left Propaganda, which would have been ninety one, ninety two, yeah. I went back into the studio. I, I've got a home studio, and I just started doing a lot of production and songwriting sure. and doing adverts and stuff. And I and I kind of had I had enough of touring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then uh, roughly about twenty fourteen, they gave me a call and said to me. He, He's been offered about 30 to 40 gigs every year oh. from a UK promoter if we went out and promoted Simple Minds music. Mm-hmm. And, and, and to be honest, we, uh, I thought it was a great idea because I just missed gigging mm-hmm. and we, we went out on the road and that's how it started. Sure, sure. No, it's pretty, no. and, and, it's ba- and basically all it is is a celebration of Simple Minds music mm-hmm. from from some of the early stuff right through to Alive and Kicking and all the big hits sure, that sure. we had. And, and, and some of the tracks I'm not on, but um, we just do it to celebrate the band and have fun. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Owen, uh, Owen Paul was... Uh, now, I, I'm aware he's lead singer of uh, XSM, but was he lead singer from the, from, from when it got got stopped, got created by yourself? Was he lead... Yeah, well, well him, and Derek, him and Derek were in a band called Four Good Men. OK. And there was a kind of, just again, it was a kind of mixture of all sorts of songs, okay. Simple Mind songs, big country songs. Cool, yeah. They had um, a few other famous names in the band. And they had a guy called Smiley, who was a drummer with Joe, um, Joe Strummer, uh-huh. and a few other guys. Mick McNeil, actually, keyboard player with Simple Minds, was in the band as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, like I say, it was Owen and Derek that kind of moved it into another, into XSM, and then they said, Brian, we need you to come along and help and get involved, and sure. think it'd be a great idea. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, Nick, it was, um, I love it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's great fun. There's no pressure on anyone. It's just good mm-hmm. out celebrating. We do a lot of festivals all over Europe. Fantastic. Um, obviously not at this moment mm-hmm. in time, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just that's, that was the, the great thing about it. So it's celebrating Simple Minds music, past and present. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant. And I'm just just thinking. So, I mean, you, you, you Owen, and uh, Co- all uh, just just waiting to get gigging again, of course. And uh, oh, do, do <laughs> let us know when you start. <laughs> Give everyone an update. We had, we, we had um, some concerts in Italy penciled in for March this year, oh, and I don't God. know what's the situation with Italy at the moment, but they've mm. now um, backdated it to October, which is a gotcha. big jump from March. Yeah. But um, obviously, you just have to be patient and sit it out. It's not easy. No, no. Um, not so. And I don't want to go down the COVID rant at the moment. No. Um, no. But I think basically everyone just has to knuckle down mm. and sit in a foxhole until... Uh, it's yeah. safe enough and, and it's uh, okay for everyone to get back out and do what we do. Absolutely, mate, absolutely. Uh, so, have you got uh, anything you want to ask? Nothing. 
Okay, uh, we'll just do uh, the the uh, one of our simple questions. Uh, is where would you ideally, you know, the, just say COVID is over and done with. We we say in a year's time. You already said about Italy going back. So we say we we are now January February of uh, twenty twenty two. Where would Brian McGee and uh, XSM or whatever project you where where would you envisage where would you want to be ideally? Well, we have. I'm going to go back to Italy again next uh-huh. month, unfortunately for you. But no, no. Um, <laughs> we, no, we've had a great run in Italy. Um, mm. We've made a lot of friends, being in XSM, and we have lots of friends in Spain, but mostly in Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, I love Italy. I love the culture and I love yeah. the people. Oh, very nice. And yeah, so definitely. so enthusiastic, and also it's nice and sunny. Mm. So mm. when you're stuck in Glasgow, <laughs> the, the winter is killing your feet and your hands. And all you have to think about is a lovely day in Rimini or a nice get in or Florence or Nice or not Nice, but Nice is in France, um, Na- Napoli, Naples mm-hmm. or somewhere like that. That's that's where I'm, that's my future basically. That's why I'm uh, homing on to keep me going from sanity to insanity. <laughs> and I know one thing is we're in minuses here, but I'll tell you what. On the south coast, we average, I think it is between six and eight degrees warmer than you. And it is cold here, so I don't know what you're putting up with. I don't really want to know. You minus eight tonight? <laughs> Ten? Nick, up in Scotland, six to eight degrees. We call that taps half. Meaning you're taking your top off because it's summer. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, mate. I like it. I like it. Uh, right. Well, listen, by the way, before we go any further, yeah. um, last time we spoke, you asked me if I would ever do a Eurovision song. Yes. Uh, and I, and I, after the day after the interview, I called a few of my friends and not one of them's called me back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So we don't need to ask. Well, we don't need to ask the question again at the moment. You're... <laughs> well, no, no, I'll, just, I'll, just do, I'll just do one on my own. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Brian, if I, you... I thought you were going to drag me up for a minute so I could do a duet with him. Oh. No, darling. I've never heard you sing next, so you never know. I sing awful. If, if you sit, ever hear a Brighton Hove Albion match, uh, shown on, on Match of the Day, and there's somebody out of tune, that's me. Yeah. The cat even goes hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Someone's going to sing. Brian, <laughs> um, how, if you could sing with anybody famous or not, yeah, anybody famous, who would you like to sing with? Uh, I'm an absolute mad lover of soul music and mm. female singers, uh, and I'm absolutely in love with Mary J. Blythe. So, huh? um, and and I, I, I can listen to her all day long. Obviously, I love, and it sounds strange coming from a simple minds propaganda background, but all of my influences are soul music. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, even Tina Turner, Aretha Franklin, mm-hmm. those big soul divas. Um, Whitney Houston, even Whitney Houston's a, a sad miss. I can still can't believe she's gone, um, and gone so early and so young. But it would be mm. Mary J. Blige too for me because she's just incredible and she just sings with such soul and feeling. It's a shiver up the back of the mm. song she does. I know. And uh, was it Aretha Franklin did? They they got together with the uh, RPO with that backing, and that was just yeah. absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, right. blows your mind. Go, go on YouTube and look up Aretha Franklin singing Ness and Dorma. Okay, uh, I think it was the Grammys or the Emmys okay. or something. And Aretha Franklin was a mad smoker, you wouldn't believe it. Oh. And the way she sings Ness and Dorma is absolutely unbelievable. I should do it in a minute, actually. Yeah, I really will. <laughs> uh, Brian, okay, fantastic. Now. I mean, obviously, the Eurovision question. Let's find another way of getting the <laughs> getting the other half of Glasgow not speaking to you. Um, let's say, uh, okay, is there anybody who's passed away famous? It could be film star, could be singer, could be anyone else. Is there anybody you'd have liked to have had dinner with? Platonic, you know, I just mean, is there a singer you'd like to have he had, might, a, he had might a want di- more than one, with? more than one person. You know, film star, singer, anyone you'd like to have met, even. Um, well, 
I'm a left-handed drummer, and really, <laughs> to be honest, you one of my big heroes was Phil Collins, yep. and I never got the chance. I met Peter Gabriel loads of times, wow. and I met some of the other guys in Genesis, but I never had the pleasure of sitting even hitting up for a for a stare. At Phil, I love Phil Collins. I think uh, Phil Collins is um, uh, an amazing drummer. He was an mm. amazing drummer with Genesis, mm. and has always been a brilliant um, and a serious inspiration to me. And of course, also uh, a drummer that t- took lead vocals. Yes, mm. well, it's really bizarre that because Peter Gabriel was the original drummer in Genesis, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and yeah. he took front. And then when he took the front vocal, Phil Collins came into the band. Yeah. And then when Peter Gabriel left <laughs> Genesis, Phil Collins took over, and they were, they were just unbelievable. After after Peter Gabriel left, everyone thought they wouldn't be successful after that. They actually became astronomical. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking this. There's so few drummers that did lead vocals. Uh, Ricky Delenz. Yeah. We just there's so few. We could actually count them on our fingers, couldn't we? Yeah. I think. Ka- yeah. Karen Carpenter. Y- yes. The girl, yes. The girl like the honeycombs, have I the right? Yeah, um, her, yeah. Dave, Dave, Dave Clark Five, all the old school. Yeah, actually thinking of it, yeah, yeah, well done. Ringo, Ringo Starr. We haven't really heard, apart from Octopus's Garden, I don't know what else he's saying. Yeah, I know, I know. When, I, when I'm 64. Oh, yes, of course. Bang in tune. Yeah, absolutely bang in tune. Brilliant. Uh, Brian, right, um... Facebook pages, websites. Yeah, this is not, your moment, I, mate. I, I, I'm, I'm not one for self promotion. I'm, I'm quite a reclusive, private individual. Mm-hmm. But anyone wants to find out anything about XSM, mm-hmm. they can find it on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And if they want to speak to me directly, personally, uh, I'm straightforward. I'm on Brian McGee Facebook. Yep, 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 yep. No problems at all. Well, what I really meant anyway, Brian, was you know, is there a Facebook page or group for you know XSM mm-hmm. or whatever? Yeah, uh, XSM has a Facebook page, and mm-hmm. like I say, um, a, a lot of times, Simple Minds fans and propaganda fans send me private messages, which I don't mind. Mm-hmm. And, if I, and if I have the time, I answer back, and we get a good. I have some friends sure. that are Simple Minds fans now because we've got so close to each other. A lot of Spanish friends, I mm-hmm. have, a lot of Italians, and all my English and Scottish friends. And we, we have a chat every now and again. They'll send me a wee message saying, Hi, Brian, how are you doing? And, I don't have any problem with that at all because they're all very mannerly and, sure. and if they weren't, if they weren't, I'd put them in their place anyway. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Brian. Um, obviously, I shall, I shall tidy this up a bit. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, just uh, everyone that knows me and all my family and friends, mm. please stay safe. Mm. Don't be stupid. Don't go anywhere you don't have to. Yeah. And uh, I love my mum and I miss my mum and. Mm. Uh, Best wishes, and please dedicate a record to my beautiful wife, Alison, mm-hmm. and Louise, my daughter. We will do. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure, uh, as always. And uh, and as I said the, the first time we chatted, uh, do stay in touch. And you said it was down to me to stay in touch. I've, so I'm doing that at the moment. So keep us updated as to what you're doing and the tours and that, and we can, you know, it's, it's you know I like to give give you a plug although you're not you are not really here for the publicity I appreciate that but it, it's nice to help each other do you know what I mean? I get that Nick and I appreciate yeah. everything you do as well and um, I know you do a lot of work networking for trying to get the radio station mm. up and running and mm. letting everyone know and I'll do my best to help you as well. No, thank you Brian so much and it's just been a pleasure again and keep safe mate. Thank you. Take and care. Bye bye. All the best Sue. Thank Cheers. you. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Take care. Bye.